morning. So it is 10, 15 on Friday. Mark took the day off so he could process our chickens. We're about two weeks late doing that because we've been busy, but he is gonna process the chickens. As a matter of fact, I need to go turn on this camera monitor in here. Let's pause the Roomba so we can hear. But I need to turn on, I need to turn on this camera monitor so I'll be able to um, hear if Mark needs me while he's outside. I'll show you where he's working. Um, Let's put you in this hand since I'm right-handed. So he is right there somewhere. Well, he's right there somewhere. He's got on a yellow. Oh, there he goes right there. He's over there. So I'm gonna turn on the sound on this. So I'll be able to. So I can hear if he needs me while he's out there, he's working with some super sharp knives. And so if I'm inside and he's out there processing chickens or um, working on something with sharp blades or whatever, I like to be able to hear, what, hear him if he needs me. So anyway, so our kids are coming tomorrow, some of them and some of their friends are coming tomorrow and they're going to get their pictures made in the sunflowers. And so, um, today I'm gonna work on cooking. Um, I have chicken in the crock pot because I'm gonna make uh, buffalo chicken pizza and I'm gonna cook up hamburger meat and sausage because I'm going to make a meat. That's part of the, well, I'm going to make a meat pizza and a cheese pizza for the babies. Um, but what I want to do is I want to make some brown sugar because Mark wants cinnamon buns and the brown sugar that I have is light brown sugar. And I want to use dark brown sugar. So brown sugar is really easy to make. If you don't know that, I'll take you with me as I make the brown sugar so you can see. And if you don't have any brown sugar at home, you probably have the ingredients. It literally is two ingredients um, to make your own. And then I'm going to make, we are out of loaf bread. So I need to make loaf bread. So I'm gonna make my own homemade pizza crust. But that's what I'm working on today. So um, Mark took the day off actually to do the chickens because we just we just don't have enough time in the week to get everything done. So anyway, we'll get started and I'll be back soon. Okay, so we're gonna make the brown sugar. And I'm sorry if you can hear the noise in the background. I have to leave that monitor on so I can hear Mark in case he needs me. Look what a mess my hair is. Oh well, we'll fix it after I get through with this. Anyways, I wanna show you something funny about this, uh, this uh, cabinet. Y'all gonna laugh, look at this. Okay, so here we have our two very large canisters. I think they're three gallon, I think. But um, anyways, we buy this stuff in bulk because I make our own bread. Um, Mark drinks sweet tea. I also bake and we feed the hummingbirds and I like to make their 
their um, food from scratch. But anyways, look how hilarious this is. So you see this cabinet, how far down it is. So to get these out, to be able to use them, you have to slide them to the end and then pull them out. <laughs> so when I want to use the sugar, which we do now, you got to slide it to the end. Scoot that one over. Pull this one out. Scoot that one over. Scoot it in. And now we have our sugar out. Is that not the craziest thing you've ever seen? <laughs> okay, so now that we've went through all the drama to get the sugar container out, I'll show you how we're gonna make the brown sugar. I don't usually measure, but I will get a measuring cup just um, to show you kind of what you do. Um, I'm gonna use my KitchenAid mixer for this. And you just use your regular, you know, like you're gonna make a cake, the regular beater. And if you have a hand mixer that works, if you don't have a hand mixer, you can use a fork. A fork will work too. It'll just, it'll probably take you 14 days to stir it up, but hey, use what you got. So we are gonna use, we're gonna use this KitchenAid. And what I like to do is, oh, you may be wondering why this, this press and seal is on the top of the sugar container. I keep that on both of my uh, large containers because these lids don't have a seal around them. And so I want to make sure that no moisture gets into the sugar or flour. So I just put a piece of press and seal on there and then put the lid on and that seems to, I never have any problems with it. So that seems fine. Anyway, let me get a measuring spoon. So what you wanna do is um, for every cup of white sugar or, you know, sugar in the raw, you can make it with that too. But for every cup of sugar, you use one tablespoon of molasses. And I use this kind, but it lasts forever. So, um, I like a darker brown sugar when I'm making cinnamon buns. That's what Mark likes too. So I probably will do two tablespoons of molasses for every cup of white sugar, but I want to make a good size container of it. I probably will use this since there's nothing being stored in this right this minute. I'm probably gonna make this. So um, this is a six cup container. So we'll go ahead and make six cups. So we'll put in our sugar, measure our sugar. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And I don't keep a measuring cut inside my containers because I don't like the fact of having your hand on this, even though I know my hands are clean, I've washed them and the cup is clean. I just don't like the fact of touching this and then putting it inside my container. Um, you know, so I, I don't keep scoops or any, or measuring cups or anything like that inside my containers. So we did six cups of white sugar, and now we're going to do, I'm gonna start with 10. We'll do 10 
tablespoons of molasses. And we'll see what color that is after. And then um, we'll, we'll go from there from uh, 10 tablespoons and see what it looks like then. that sugar to dry. That took about seven minutes by the time I got it, um, got the molasses in there really good and scraped it, scraped down the side several times. And then I turned it up on a little bit higher and let it um, continue mixing. So it would be nice and combined and um, mixed up really well. You get all that um, molasses, get all that molasses mixed up good. But I'll show you what it looks like. It looks really good. And then I'll show you the difference in the color of this. This is much richer. The color of this and the color of the brown sugar that I have already. Um, I really like this deep, rich, brown sugar. I don't know if you can really see that. I really like this, this brown sugar. Um, you can see the difference in the color. This is my light brown sugar and this is the dark. So you can tell there's quite a difference in it. Um, but the darker or richer that you want the brown sugar, um, that that tells you how much molasses you want to put in. If you put in a lot of molasses, then you're going to get a dark, rich brown sugar. This is the one that Mark likes the best for um, cinnamon rolls. So that's what I'm going to that's what I'm going to make this with or make, that's what I made this to make. And then um, usually that light brown sugar, I put in oatmeal or something like that, or cookies or something like that. But um, this one's Mark's favorite. So I'm gonna bottle this up in this and um, get ready to make my dough for the, for the, um, Pizza, the pizza dough. Let's see, we need dough for several things. We need, we need pizza crust. We need um, four loaves of bread so I don't have to make it again and I'll probably send a loaf home with Samantha and a loaf home with Heather. Um, so four loaves of bread. I'll put one in the freezer here for us and I'll keep one out for us to use and then send a loaf home with each one of the girls. Oh, three loaves. I need to send one home with Megan. Okay, so we won't put one in the freezer. We'll give one to Megan, one to Samantha, one to Heather. And then I need to make dough for the cinnamon buns. And I'm making garlic, um, garlic knots. So I need to make the, the dough for that too. So, um, I'm trying to get everything prepped and done today that I can do because we like to spend all the time with the kids and the grandbabies, you know, and all that. So I don't want to spend all my time in the kitchen cooking and cleaning when I could be, you know, playing with the kids and making sure I get pictures and that kind of stuff. So, and Mark feels the same way. So we just, we're trying to get our chores done today and get um, ahead of everything for the weekend. 
We have some friends coming over that are gonna take pictures in the sunflowers too. And so I'm trying to get as much done today as I can get done. And then um, spend all day tomorrow with our family. So I'm going to find me a... Um, <laughs> I need to run and get a uh, funnel. I'll be right back. Okay, we're gonna get this scooped in here. Oh, and I've never had a problem with this, um, like clumping up or drying out or anything like that. But I, I don't know why. The light brown sugar that, that I got that from the store, but the light brown sugar, um, for some reason, it always... I always have to wind up using a spoon to dig it out of the jar, and I don't like to do that. So whenever that light brown sugar is gone, I'm gonna I'm gonna make my own because I would much prefer to have this um, than that store bought stuff anyway. So uh oh, I spilled some. But this is really good to make cinnamon buns with. So I thought the kids would enjoy those and I'll send some of those home with them too. Um, they all work a lot. So they'll have a cinnamon bun to have for breakfast on Monday or when, when they go to work or Sunday morning after they've been here on Saturday or whatever, they'll have a cinnamon bun to enjoy. Okay, so let me clean this up and get ready for um, getting the meat on the stove to cook. I need to cook the sausage and um, I need to cook the sausage the chicken is already in the crock pot, and I need to cook the ground beef. So let me clean up this little mess that I made with the sugar and go fix whatever has happened to my hair. And then I'll be back to um, get some other things going. Okay, so we're going to run outside and check on Mark and see how he's coming along with the chickens. Um... I am going to video that. Well, I don't know what he's doing right now. I haven't looked to see, but I know that he is processing the chickens. And so if um, you maybe don't want to see what processing a chicken uh, looks like, then fast forward to the next part because uh, I want to go out there and see what he's doing and see what he has to say. Okay, so Mark is processing the chickens right now. Um, this doesn't doesn't look crazy. It's just a whole chicken here that he's getting ready to um, put in the ice. And then um, we have our next set here. I won't show you what's over there because you probably don't want to see that. But, um, yeah. So, what's going on out here, Mark? Just processing chickens, harvesting them, and cleaning them out. And, uh, making sure that they're cleaned up really good. They're kind of small this year, but nothing we can do about that. And these are the white meat birds, yeah, right? Yeah, these are the white meat birds. And we got some reds over there, too, that we're going to process also. What are they, red what? Red Brockers, I think, or I can't remember. But um, they're quite a bit bigger they're than. They're bigger. 
than the white meat birds. Yeah. And these are our ladies. These are our laying hens. They just roam around and do whatever they do, but they're good chickens. They don't cause too much of a problem. We've had a little bit of trouble keeping them out of the garden. So um, they like to venture over there into the garden, but they're fine. Then the other chickens are over in a different uh, run or a different uh, chicken coop on the other side of the house. So, um, so anyways, Mark's going back and forth and grabbing chickens from over there and bringing them over here and getting them processed. So is it hard to... Is it hard to process the chickens? Not hard, just tedious. Just kind of, again, just kind of make sure that uh, we do the best we can to make sure we're sanitary and and harvest them the most humane way possible. Um, I use the, uh, the broom handle method to dispatch them, so. And I what's that? What is that? I, uh, well, you kind of look it up, but I take the broom handle, I put their head underneath the broom handle, and I pull up on it and break their neck, and then that uh, separates the spinal cord from them, and then I uh, will cut their carotid artery and bleed them out, and then uh, we go from there. Let it bleed out, and then I uh, will start harvesting and cutting them out and making sure that uh, get as much meat as we can out of them. Right now I'm doing whole birds. So as soon as I'm done with doing whole birds, then I'll start uh, quartering them out. So anyway, that's what we're doing. Okay. Well, you'll be happy to know I've just made homemade dark brown sugar to get your cinnamon buns going. Oh, so good. that's what I'm working on inside that and the pizza, the pizza dough and our loaf bread. Okay. So it looks like this one's up next. We're gonna go inside and we're real excited to have, you know, the chickens on the farm that we can process ourselves, And, you know, we know what they've been fed. We know how they've been taken care of. And um, I, I really like being able to have the chickens on the farm that we can process ourselves, or Mark can process. I'll cook them, he processes them. But we really do like that. Um, we buy them from just babies when they're only two weeks old, and then we raise them on good food, and you know, we take care of them. They get to run around, they get to have a really good life while they live here even though it's short they do get to have a good life so um but yeah we will uh i'll show you when i start to cook one of them up what it looks like after everything's all said and done and we're going and how we um bring them in the house and uh process them further we're going to, some of them will cut up into pieces or, you know, into, into sections, but we're gonna use the um, Food Saver vacuum seal and uh, put these all up in our freezer. So how many chickens do you think you'll, get, you'll do today, Mark? Um, probably 20, 25 chickens today. 25? Okay. Well, I'm listening to you on the monitor, so if you need me, just yell. Okay, so we have out all of our ingredients. Um, I'm going to cook the ground beef first and um, get that going. And if y'all don't have one of these, you got to get one of these. This is the best thing ever for chopping up ground beef. I got this one at Walmart. They sell them at Pampered Shelf, but I think that's a little overpriced. But um, I think we paid $7 for this one.
I don't remember, but I think we paid seven seven dollars for it. But um, I'm gonna cook the ground beef and I'm just gonna season it with my season salt. I've not made a video on how I make my season salt. It's real easy, it's just a ton of stuff put together. But um, I have to watch my salt intake. So this, I use um, pink Himalayan sea salt. Um, but I don't use a lot of it. It's a lot of spice and a little bit of salt. But um, I'm sure that it's much better than, you know, what we buy in the store. So, you know, like the Lowry's season salt or whatever, that's just like mostly sodium. So I'm gonna use this. <clears throat> I'm gonna use this to season the ground beef and get that cooked. And then, uh-oh, my phone rang, but that's okay. I needed to wash my hands after opening up that beef anyway. So, but yeah, I'm just gonna, I don't know if you can see, but look how beautiful that is. I love making my own season salt. We just buy stuff in bulk at Sam's, and then that way um, I can make my own and I can, I can control how much salt and sodium and all the other stuff is going inside our food. But we're gonna, I'm going to smash this up. This thing, I swear, you gotta get one of these. But I'm gonna smash this up with this and then I'm gonna cover it and let it cook for a little bit until it gets brown. And then I'll take it off the stove and let it cool for a few minutes and put it in a sealed container. And we'll use this tomorrow when I make the um, pizza. I promised the kids pizza last weekend. They were supposed to come last weekend to um, take pictures in the sunflowers, but we had a lot of rain. And so they didn't get they didn't get to um, they didn't get to come and the sunflowers have been blooming now for almost two weeks and you know sunflowers don't last very long and so we wanted to make sure that they got out here to get their pictures made they had all plans they were bringing friends and all that kind of stuff to get to have their um, pictures made. And um, we had a big weekend planned, and then it rained, and we didn't get to do any of that. So, anyways, so they'll come this weekend and do it. Okay, so we're going to let that cook a minute. I need to wash my hands, and then we're going to chop up some vegetables. I did leave my stand mixer out because... I'm going to use that to make the uh, pizza dough. I have a no need, no need pizza dough recipe that I'm going to use. So, <coughs> excuse me, that's choke. Oh, hold on one second. Let me check on Mark. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, so I'm trying to save seeds from everything that we bring in from the garden. So I just like to cut these and save this end and let it dry out because look how many seeds are on that. It's crazy to throw that away. 
I mean, I'll preserve these seeds and plant these next year in my garden. So that's one less set of seeds that I have to buy. So, and I did wash these. I just, um, I washed them before I turned on the camera. But anyway, I keep a little bowl back there in the back of things that I'm gonna treat the chickens with whenever I go back outside. When it gets hot outside, I like to give them, um, they like, they like frozen berries and, um, they like frozen berries and they love strawberries. And then we've got a lot of cantaloupe right now in the garden. And so when I cut up the cantaloupe, I leave just a smidge on the, um, a smidge of cantaloupe on the, you know, on the rind. And I'll give that to the chickens and they just love it. But their favorite thing is strawberries. So when I cut the strawberries, when I cut up our strawberries, I always leave, like when you cut the cap off, I leave a little bit of, well, probably more than I should, but I like, it's hot outside and I like to give them a treat. You know, they provide eggs for us every single day, a lot of eggs. And so, I like to treat them because, you know, they're taking care of us. And so we're going to take care of them. They also like blueberries too. I do, I keep frozen blueberries in the, in the deep freeze out there just for them so they can have a treat. Because it, it gets real hot outside and humid, you know, and they, they'll have their little wings opened up. I don't know if you've ever seen a chicken when they get hot, but um, they open up their little wings and they'll walk around to cool off. They hold their wings up to cool off. And um, so we just try to help them get, you know, help them get cool. And giving them frozen treats is a, is a huge help, I'm sure. They're in the shade, they're always in the shade, but um, if they venture out and go out into the yard or sometimes they go over to the other chicken's coop and wander around to see what's going on over there, they'll get hot and so we'll freeze them some water, um, like, you know, put two or three inches of water in the in a pan and stick it in the deep freeze overnight and then let them have that. And um, they'll peck at that until, it, until it's melted. But we try to just think of little things that we can do, you know, to keep them, to keep them happy and cool and all that kind of stuff because like I said, they take care of us where eggs are concerned. I, we've not bought eggs since, um, I'll have to look back at our farm journal, but I don't think that we've bought any eggs since July of 2021 because we've, we've had the chickens and that's been nice. So, but I'm going to put peppers and onions on this, um, I'm going to chop up peppers and onions for the pizza and I'm just going to stick that in the refrigerator in a container but at least that much will be done for tomorrow because you know sometimes when the kids are coming if I've been real busy in the garden or just busy with whatever you know making these videos takes a lot of time we've got several videos that are timed um, they have uh, a date on them to be published onto our YouTube channel because we just you know we just getting started with this but um, these videos take a long time to make and edit and put music to and 
you know, you got to cook things and wait on things and then go back and forth. So it takes time to do that. And then, um, you know, sometimes I fall behind with getting things done and I wind up doing things on the day that the kids are coming. And I really don't like to do that because that it stresses me out so badly to have to, um, not have things in order and have to be working on stuff when I could be, you know, all the kids are outside and they're playing, you know, they'll come, they, they'll come in and talk and offer to help and all that. But for me, I would rather do what I need to do ahead of time. And then when the kids are here, I can enjoy them and I don't have to worry about, you know, if my kitchen's dirty or if, you know, our food is ready. Cause you know, when kids come home, they're hungry. So I like to make sure that I have all this stuff done. So, um, you know, when I wake up in the morning, I can get a shower. I think Megan is the first one that's going to be here in the morning. She's coming around 930. So she'll get here right in the middle of morning chores. But, um, and then the other kids are coming, um, probably around 11. Uh, Samantha needs to feed Alice. It's quite a drive for them. So she needs to feed baby Alice before she, um, before they get on the road. And then, you know, Heather will need to feed Nathaniel and Braxton and get them together. So it takes some time to get them moving in the morning. But I wanna make sure that I have everything here done and clean and ready so that when they get here, um, we can go over, we can get pictures in the sunflowers, they can change clothes if they want, and then there's a lot of stuff out in the garden that they can harvest, and, um, you know, we can just spend the day as a family and not have to worry about chores. So, I'm going to get these things, the peppers and onions in the refrigerator, finish cooking this, get the sausage in to cook, and I will be back um, when I gather all the ingredients to start making our bread. Okay, so we have the sausage cooking. I'm only going to use half of this sausage for our pizza because when I get up in the mornings, I like to make Mark his breakfast before I get my day started because most of the time... I'm working in the garden all day and so I like to have um, the whatever breakfast meat I'm gonna give him if he gets breakfast meat sometimes I just make him grits and eggs but I'll use half of this um, for his breakfast for next week so I'm gonna cook this up and save half of it into um, a container for our pizza tomorrow and the other half for Mark's breakfast next week. Okay, so here we go on our bread. We need, um, I'm doubling this bread recipe because like I said, I want to send some home with the kids. So, um, I'm gonna make two batches at one time. So we need four cups of hot water um, this is a four cup measuring cup. So we need four cups of hot water and we're going to put that right in that, inside our mixer. And then, so we're going to add the yeast, the water, and a little, I have fresh honey, so of course I'm going to use that. But, um, we're going to measure out this, this, um, yeast. When you put the yeast in there and you let it sit for 10 minutes, if it doesn't start to foam or whatever, then you know your yeast has gone bad and you need to um, start over. So I'm going to get the yeast in there. It says that we need two tablespoons of active dry yeast. And that's what we have here. So Go ahead and get this in. Okay. 
that's not quite a tablespoon. So we'll go ahead and open the next one. I love making my own bread. Gosh, it's so good. When it very first comes out of the oven, my goodness, there's nothing better. Okay. And then for my bread, instead of using the sugar, because it says that you could use sugar or you can use, um, so three of those was two tablespoons. But it says that you can either use, it's already foaming, so I know it's good. Um, it says that you can use a, a sugar or you can use honey. I have this one ounce measuring scoop and um, I put half of the honey in when in with the yeast and then I put the other half a scoop in when I, um, you know, finish up the rest of the ingredients. We have a lot of honey, so I use it every chance I get. So, um, now we're gonna, we're gonna let this run. It's already getting foamy, so I know that it's good. But, um, I'm actually going to switch out this dough attachment for my regular beer. So I make sure that the um, yeast is mixed up good. Okay, so that needs to sit. That needs to sit for um, about 10 minutes um, to proof. And so I know that it's good. I know that the yeast is good because the um, there's already foam forming on top of it. So we'll let that sit and then we're going to add the rest of the honey, some salt and oil, and then we will start putting in the um, flour. So I'm gonna let that sit for 10 minutes and we'll be back. Okay, so that still has about five minutes left to sit there and proof. So what we're gonna do is prepare our pans and our bowl. So what I like to do is I use a clean paper towel and get some Crisco on it, and you want to make sure that your bowl is very well greased, um, that you're going to put the dough in to, to proof. Make sure your bowl is greased, and then we're going to grease our pans. You don't have to be much, just enough to coat it. Don't get, just make sure that you get it all on the edges and down in the, you know, nooks and crannies of the pan. Now I only have, I've got, well I've got one more loaf pan but it's very small so I'm just going to use this um, to bake two loaves. But what I'll do is put two loaves in this um, long ways and then that'll be fine. I just, I want to make sure that I get all of them done, so I'm not going to wait for these pans to come out of the oven to um, use them again. I'm just going to, I'm going to get it all ready at the same time. So everything's good and oiled up, and so I'm going to get back to this, measure out a flour, and I'll be right back. 
Okay, so to this we're going to add four teaspoons of salt. I use pink Himalayan sea salt. So we're gonna add four teaspoons of that. So four teaspoons of that. And then we need four tablespoons of canola oil. And now what we're gonna do is put in the other um, half a scoop of our honey. Whoops, well, got, my goodness. Got the, can't hold on to anything problem. Okay, put this in some hot water. Okay, we're gonna mix that around. Get this honey off of me. Hey, I made a mess. Okay. So now we're gonna start adding the flour. It, I'm doubling the recipe and it says to use um, um, anywhere between eight and 11 cups. So I'll just mix it until it gets to the consistency that I like. And then, um, and then we'll get it ready to um, get it out of the bowl and proof or get it in the bowl to proof. So, we, I guess I'll do it a cup at a time since I'm doubling the recipe. So, okay. Oh, we need to change. I do want to change out this because once that starts, once that starts mixing, it will be, it will be a, um, sticky mess to try to change that out. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start with eight cups and see how it looks from there.
but you'll know when it's the right consistency because the um, the dough literally cleans up the bulk. So the, as the dough spins around as it needs, um, it pulls away from the bowl. And I'll show you what that, I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. Okay, you can see how it's still real doughy and gluey. So I'm gonna add another cup of flour and then we'll check it again, but it literally should be pulling the dough off of the bowl. Um, and it's not quite doing that yet. It's still pretty, it's still pretty doughy. So let me add another cup of flour and uh, we'll check it again. So what we're gonna do is take a towel and I put just a little bit of water on it and we are going to cover up this bowl and Mark built me a rack to go out on the porch. Um, the bottom of it is, it's got like a container for shoes and then it has a place to hang your coats. Well, on the very top of it is a rack that I can use to cool pies and cakes or proof the bread. So I'll take a picture of that when I go outside, but that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna put this out there and it needs to proof for an hour and a half. And while, while that proofs, proofs, I'm going to clean up my mixer and get ready for the next thing. Okay, so our bread has risen, I'll show you. It filled up that great big bowl. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna punch this down and then we are going to load up our pans. So um, we're, we're just gonna punch it down in that bowl and then pinch it off into um, the pieces that we need to go in these pans. I have my hands oiled up. So you can see here, you just want to deflate that. So you just completely deflate it. So, and now it's just a tiny ball again. So what we're gonna do is This is gonna be four loaves. So we wanna make sure that we pinch off just the right amount. So I like to take mine on like this, hold it like this and tuck everything into the bottom and then lay it in the pan like so. Let me do one more and I'll show you what that pan looks like. Now we have to let this rise again for one hour and then we'll cook it. So here's these two. So we've got this left here. So we're gonna pinch off the piece. And just lay it in the pan.
gonna spray this little little pan because I had extra dough. And we're gonna put it in this pan. So we've got, we wound up with four pans and then this loaf pan. But these need to proof now for um, an hour. And then I'll show you what they look like once they get done. And then we'll bake them. I did not get a chance to weigh this, but this is the chicken that Mark processed today. Okay, so it's a, a Saturday morning. Oops. And some of the kids have already gotten here. I have two of the pizza crust made. I have one more going here. And I have one more to make. So the kids are anxious to get out here in the sunflowers and get some pictures made. So that's what we are off to do now. So if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.